Hello again, everyone. Uh, it's still Saturday the 3rd. Yep, it's still Saturday the 3rd. <laughs> How many videos have I put up now? I'm trying to get through my email. And some of these I, you know, just feel like I should share. Now, these two I'm putting together, keeping this short, because a lot of you have seen this on regular TV. Or if you don't watch regular TV, you might have seen them on here or somewhere else on someone else's channel. But it's 6.51 p.m. And I'm going to tell you the titles and uh, just a sentence or two on what they're saying. And I'll leave the date, the data. How about that? In the... Uh, description box i'm so tired i can't hardly think my uh i didn't get much of a nap because the diet dietary brought me lunch and i do not order lunch because they knock <laughs> and it's always the big meal of the day so i had quit eating dinners here after six weeks because i gained so much weight right away it's unbelievable how quickly I can put on 10 pounds. I'm like, whoa, I'm not eating your food anymore. And it's good. The lunch meal is really good. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's start with this one here. It's called, here's the, here's the title. What happens if Trump stays unwell at the time of the election? Now, this is not a very long one, and it's actually by Sky News. I find I found it kind of funny. I'm listening to uh, what's going on from, it does not sound like a typical American. I don't know where Sky News is from. Uh, is it Canada? Is it Australia? I'm not sure. I'll let you hear a few minutes of it, or a little bit. Campaigners on both sides are wishing Donald Trump well, but with the country in crisis and just 31 days to go until the election, people are starting to wonder seriously what happens if the president doesn't recover fairly soon. The US Constitution sets out the process, and this is the really crucial section, the 25th Amendment, which has almost every eventuality covered. Here's what happens if the president is communicative but unable to carry on, however temporarily. Donald Trump would have to write that he's handing over his duties to the vice president, Mike Pence. But if he's unexpectedly incapacitated, a majority of the cabinet needs to agree that it is in fact Mr. Pence who takes charge. For Mr. Trump to regain power after this, Congress would have to be convinced that he had sufficiently recovered. If two thirds of both chambers vote to disagree, Vice President Pence would stay in charge until the next election, so the 3rd of November. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Now, here's another lady talking, but if you want to hear the rest, I'll let you just click on that link if you wish. Channeled again is Sky News. Title again is What Happens If Trump Stays Unwell at the Time of the Election. Now, this video, which a lot of people are real politically... Uh, knowledgeable. I remember learning all that in the ninth grade. We had to do a debate on the Electoral College. At that time I could not talk from my mouth going so dry. It was ridiculous. I was so shy. I could not talk. I, it's absolutely unbelievable what God has done with me. If I hadn't become a nurse, I probably never well, I don't know. I had to go back to college to try to be something else, and that's where I took speech class when I was in a four-year program trying to get a Bachelor's of Fine Arts. That's. But having been a nurse, you know, you have to speak up at times. You're talking to doctors. You might be talking to your LPNs, anybody below that. You're in charge because you're the registered nurse. 
you're automatically in charge if you're the only one. And that happened quite frequently. So anyway, I learned how to speak up. That's why I was telling you when I was a kid and those children that came up to us that were quite much bigger than us pulled those chains. It was a miracle God when I pulled out that metal ruler I had just so happened to borrow that day for some reason. Must have been doing geography or something. I wanted to borrow a ruler. And it must have looked pretty scary. And I must have looked pretty scary swinging it around. Saying, y'all, come on. Just come on. And I was sixth grader. And I chased off about ten kids. That was God. I'm telling you what. Back to this. Second video says... Trump's physicians give Trump's physician gives update from Walter Reed ABC News. Now, didn't he go somewhere else first cuz he said something in here. I moved him up to Walter Reed. I can't remember now. But I think he was somewhere else first. And the way he said, I moved him up to Walter Reed, confirms that he was somewhere else first. Bethesda. Yeah, it says, Dr. Sean Conley provided an update from Walter Reed National Military Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland. So they must both be in uh, the same city, Bethesda. Okay. Anyway, he's just talking about how well he's doing, that they're very pleased. He introduces this whole staff of people. There's Navy nurses and there's an Army nurse and... Uh, but most of the nurses aren't here. It's mostly doctors. He mentioned an anesthesiologist, which is needed to put him out when they intubate him, if he has to be intubated. But he said they're very pleased. He's just coughing a little bit, and he's tired, and he's got a, a stuffed-up nose. So... They're just being cautious, all right? So if you want to watch that, the channel is ABC News. The title, Trump's Physician Gives Update from Walter Reed, ABC News. Okay, with that, I'm done. Bye for now. I probably won't talk to you again tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.